are y'all doing on this wonderful Wednesday, my good people? I hope that everybody is doing great. I hope that y'all are having a wonderful Wednesday, you guys. Um, welcome back. Welcome back to Southern Therapy Podcast. For those of you who are new to this channel, I am your host, the great, the extraordinary, the one, the only. I'm your cousin, your brother, not your brother, child. <laughs> I am your host, Daniel Bailey, you guys. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I really and truly uh, appreciate it. And so welcome back to today's podcast, you guys. Um, I hope that you guys actually enjoyed the last three-part um, series on how to incorporate God into your um, finances. I did three-part series on... Um, and it was free, all free knowledge. And I hope that you guys actually really and truly got something from it. And you guys are actually really and truly incorporating God into your finances. Um, I want to start off with like a brief um, testimony. And then we'll jump into today's topics. Um, I really am going to try to keep you guys 30 minutes or less. But, okay, last week we did, I mean, the last three episodes we did how to incorporate God into your finances. And I want to say this. Okay, so this today is I'm recording this on Monday, right? And so Monday I received a um, email from a dealership. This is the dealership where I purchased my car at last year. And so they were saying, "Hey, happy one year anniversary!" Blah blah blah. This and it reminded me. And this morning, it kind of like took me back to 2019 um i actually purchased the car on may the 10th 2019 and so it kind of like took me back to that space and it really and truly made me be appreciative y'all when i talk to you guys about how to incorporate god into your finances like it's real i did it and you know like i am living proof of how you can be successful and when you depend on god like last year May the 10th, 2019, I walked into a dealership and I purchased a car cash. I wrote out a check for a car, okay? And I should have went and got like the cash. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, I don't know why I should, if, if, they, if I would have did that, there would be more of me bragging and gloating. But no, I just wrote a check and it wasn't, it didn't even think cross my mind, but I've never seen $12,000 in cash, like period. But nonetheless, y'all, as I digress. But really and truly, I walked into a dealership and purchased a car cash. I was not expecting to purchase that car that day. And the car was God sent. I know I had needed a car, y'all. Yeah, I used to have a 2009 black Honda Accord two doors the car had over 285,000 miles and I'm out here still trying to drive the car true enough the car still the car still got some value like the car still can go a little bit but I just it, it started having problems like some real major problems and I travel a lot for work during that time I was traveling like an hour away from from where I was um living going to work and stuff like that so I needed a car and then I had started using my mom car because I like I said I just did not trust my car and you know you know you know your car y'all <laughs> you know what I'm saying and so I had prayed 45 days prior and was like God I know I need a new car now I was like you know because people have been telling me like when I had hit 150 150k miles at 200,000 miles like my parents and my brother was like you need to get a new car I'm like no this car has paid out blah 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 this and so finally when I didn't trust the car no more, I was like, okay, God, I need a new car. 45 days prior. So I was, you know, just praying for a car and stuff like that. And so the car that I have, like, it was just ordained. And when I included God into my finances and when I started asking him about what kind of car to get, what car to get, could you send me the car? He made provisions for the car and he made a way for me to be able to walk into a dealership and pay cash. Like, yeah, I did not have $12,000 prior, that 45 day prior. I did not have it, but God made a way 
When I tell y'all, when you include God, I can't stress that enough. God made a way for me to get a contract. Okay, a um federal contract with a three thousand dollar sign on bonus in like seventeen days. I made another four thousand dollars. So for a total of like seventeen or eighteen days, I made like seven thousand dollars. That is unheard of as a social worker. Maybe for you know, like right now during a pandemic, you may be able to make some of that money, make that type of money. But you have to go work with patients and that has COVID and you like really and truly risking your life. So it was nothing but an ordained thing by God. So when I tell y'all like he makes a way, sometimes you just got to ask him and y'all this contract that I got came looking for me. A woman cold called me from Virginia and was like, Hey, we need a LCSW. We need you to do this, this, and this. And I was like, are you serious? She was like, yeah. And she was like, we need you to start ASAP. Like it was like in April. I was like, look, sis, I got to go on a cruise at the end of the month. You know, I can't do it. And so she was like, well, as soon as you come back, if you can start working right away, please let us know. And she was like, we'll give you a $3,000 sign on bonus right now. Yo, when I tell you it was nobody but God, it was nobody but God. So when you start really and truly including him in your finances, he will make a way for the things that you need. And I always wanted to, after I had purchased my last car, I was like, God, and I really started working on my finances. I was like, I don't want to finance another car. I always want to purchase a car in cash. And if you pray about it, he's going to honor your request. And he did just that. So y'all, when I tell y'all, nobody but God. And so that just, the email just really and truly reminded me that God is a provider and that God will take care of us as long as we include him and we ask him. So I just want to give you guys that brief testimony about how God made a way. It ain't Danielle. Only thing that I had to do was get up and drive and go to the um because it was at it was it was at the Fort Polk base. I just had to go up there, drive, work with the people, work with the children, because it was at a school, it was at like elementary school, and I really didn't do much at the elementary school because it was towards the end of the year and the contract had finally found somebody that was willing to go. And so like the school was like, yo, we don't need you, we don't need nobody. And so like it was it was I didn't go back because <laughs> they had wanted me to come back for the, um, for the fall, but it was not nah, cause I would have had to do it full time then, but I didn't go back or whatever because it was just, it was just too much. And tr look y'all, when God bless you, you got to know when to hold it and when to let it go. When God tells you to let it, cause it's only there for a season. Okay. <laughs> Again, sometimes our blessings is only for a season. I tried to hold on to that job until the summertime. But y'all, by the time I had got to day 10, because I only worked 17 days. We only, because it was towards the end of the year. And it was 17 working days. By the time I got to day 10, I was wore out. I was like, this is not for me, you know? <laughs> and they was like, you coming back in the fall? I, yeah, I didn't tell them no straight out because I felt like that they would kick me out their school. I was like, I don't know what they gonna do with the contract. That's what I had to say. But I could have told them no, I'm not going. And so I was like, by day ten, I was like, yo, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't do this past the seventeen days. But I had agreed with the contract to do the summer position, and I was like, yeah, I can do the summer position. You know, right, right before I got into that and, and God quickly showed me, sis, I told you to do this for a season. You needed a car. I'm making a way for you to get a car. We not doing this during the summertime. And so like when I realized that it was just too much, I had to pray a medium and be like, God, get me out of this contract for the summertime because I don't want to do it. And lo and behold, got out the contract. Like they end up terminating the, the contract with the peak. Um, I end up, what happened? I ended up letting it go um, because of the fact they wanted me to work five days and they wanted me to stay there from nine to seven or 10 to seven. But when I signed the contract to start, we had agreed for me to work eight 
to four so that I can get back to my private practice by five and see my clients. But since the people at the base actually switched up the contract, I was able to get out of it because I agreed to eight to four. The base switched it from 10 to seven. And so since they could not operate outside of my hours, like the people were like, well, you don't have to work if you don't want to. And I was just like, bye. <laughs> yeah, I was out of there so fast. I was like, bye. But nonetheless, y'all, that's what I'm saying. Really and truly incorporate God. Try him. The Bible says, test me. He tells you, test him, test him, test him. Really and truly try your best to incorporate God. Sit down with them, talk to him, tell him the things that you need. He already aware of it, but he needs you to tell him. He needs you to ask him. He's our father, y'all. He's our dad. He wants to bless us. We just need to go to him and we just need to ask him. So that is my spiel. That is my testimony all about how God blessed me with the car. I was able to pay cash for the car. God made a way. I have not been able to come. I have not been able to come across another contract like I did last May. I have never been able to come come across a contract like that again. So when I tell you it's nothing but God, it was orchestrated and ordained by God. I mean, it was orchestrated and ordained by God. So yeah, just talk to him. All right. So for this week's topic, I want to kind of talk about um, three things. I want to talk about how was y'all Mother's Day? You know, what's going on? How was Mother's Day? I want to say happy Mother's Day to the moms. I want to say happy Mother's Day to the moms to be. I want to say happy Mother's Day um, to the aunties who are serving as moms. And I want to acknowledge the women who are trying to be moms, but you just have not been successful. I want to say I hear, we, we're here for you, sis. We are here for you. If you need us to pray for you, we pray for you and we honor you. Okay. We honor you. We know that your you, whether your body is rejecting whatever it is, I pray that God touches your womb and I pray that God heals you just like he did with Samuel's mom when he touched her womb and she was able to carry her child. Okay, so y'all, so to, to those ladies who are trying, but you're not able to successfully carry a child and you're having miscarriage after miscarriage, I pray that the God touches your wounds, touches your ovaries, and I pray that he do a thing in you and he works it out and he heals you. And I also want to pray for the ladies who are like myself. You want kids, <laughs> but there is no prospect, nowhere in sight. Okay, <laughs> you have no prospect, nowhere in sight. And unfortunately, the world societies keep telling you, you're this age, you should have a kid. You, you may not want to have a kid after 35, you know, and you just have so much um, concern and you have so much grief because you are not a mother. Um, I want to pray for you too. I want to lift you up, my sister. Um, know that you are not in this alone. Know that th you are, there's a lot of us out here who are in our 30s who are mid 30 <laughs> and some of us who are actually over 35 and you don't have a kid, but you have desires to be a mom. Um, I just pray that I, I have to believe and that's what I have to hold on to that God will honor, um, my request in some form, whether or not I physically have this child or I physically, physically carry this child or, you know, whatever he, I may have to adopt. Um, and I remember talking to my dad about this. I'm going to get real personal. Um, a while back. Oh, Lord. I can't believe I'm going to really talk about this. So, a while back, um, I had went to the gynecologist. And so, she was like, you may or you may not be able to carry a child. And I was like, what? She was like, yeah, we don't know. And I, like, I was like, and at the time I'm in my twenties. So I'm like, cool. You know, like it, it, it doesn't matter. Like I still was concerned, but it just really didn't phase me. She was like, you may, or you may not be able to carry a child because, and she just went on into it. And so I remember going to my dad and I was just like, yo, the gynecologist told me I may or may not be able to carry a child and blah, 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 this. And so, um, and like, I was really, I honestly, I was sad. I was sad, but then it, it was like, yo, I'm in my early twenties. I'm not, I don't need a kid right now. And so, um, you know, I kind of talked about it with him 
And he told me, he was like, whether you have a child physically yourself or whether you adopt a child, whatever it is, if it's yours, I'm going to love it as my own. And that's all I needed. Like, I really needed my dad to say that. I needed somebody to say whether or not if you're a mom, you know, if you physically can birth a child into this world, if you have to go and adopt it, I'm going to love that child as if you really and truly had it. And I think that Mother's Day for mothers we celebrate mothers and, and, and I'm, and I'm here for the celebration of mothers, but we also should have a day or we also should acknowledge the women who wants, who wants to have children, who have the desire to have children, but either they can't have it or either there's just no prospect for you to have a child. Like you're not married. You don't see a guy coming. Like, you know, you have all of these things to where you, you're by yourself, you know? And so I know some women they don't want to have children. That's fine. Kudos to you. But okay, y'all, I'm going to move on. I think that y'all hear my heart. So happy Mother's Day. And I want to say for the people who have lost your mom and your mom has transitioned on, my prayers are with you too as well, you guys. Um, my My heart goes out to you guys because I was able to celebrate my mom. And I know that there are some people, I have a friend, I have some friends whose mom is not here. And sometimes I feel, um, I feel bad. Like I'm not even going to lie. I feel bad that my mom is still here and her mom is not. And mind you, we are the same age and I need my mom and I know she needs hers. And so it's just like, you kind of, you feel extremely bad, but you also feel extremely blessed. Like, you really and truly start appreciating what you have and who you have in your corner and stuff like this. So to the parent, to the, to my ladies who do not have a mom, your mom has went on ahead and transitioned on to glory. My prayers are with you. And to my ladies, um, or to my people, not just my ladies whose mom is, was not the best or you don't have a really and truly great relationship with you, with her. I pray for you guys too. I'm not going to be the one to tell you to go mend that relationship. I'm going to pray that the Lord help you in whatever way, because I just don't believe in saying go mend your relationship because sometimes those wounds are so deep. And I hate when people be like, you should go and do that because you only got one mama. You on, And I'm like, yo, you can't tell nobody how to feel and all this other kind of stuff because you don't know how deep that womb is. And so what I'm trying to do is say, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that God helps you with your wounds. And if God desire, if you desire to have a relationship with your mom, I pray for that. And I just really and truly just pray that God heals you from the inside and that you take your your burdens and you take those those problems to God and you and God work work on them things. And if you need to go to a therapist, work on it with a therapist. I'm just not gonna tell you, oh, forget your mama. I can't do that. I've seen too much, y'all. Don't forget, I am a therapist full time, and I have seen some wounds by mothers that has caused their daughters. I have seen some deep down ugly nasty wounds and I get their anger I get their frustration and I get their sorrow it ain't even that it's anger and it's also sorrow and I get it so that's why I you would never hear me say you need to go make it with your mom I can't say that because the wounds could be so deep to where you're just discrediting and then that's what you have to be careful with, you guys. Stop telling people to go heal. Stop telling people to go, oh, you should, you know, you only got one mama. Or you only got one daddy. You need to go make it right. No, you don't know how deep those wounds are. And when you say that, you discredit that person's feelings. You're just telling them, you should be over. Oh, oh, and when you say, you should be over it by now. You, you're 35. No, I'm not. And you don't have to be over it by the time you're 35. Like, yo, stop saying that. 
I hate that. Oh, you should be over. You should just forgive them. No, I'm not. I haven't worked through this. They haven't did anything to help out the situation. So why should I run after the, like, yo, all of that, like, yeah, girl, I'm sorry, y'all. I don't want to up on the tangent. So stop telling people that, y'all, okay? <laughs> Please stop telling people that. If anything, continue to go into prayer on the behalf of them. I want to talk about this. I want to talk about prayer and standing in the gap, okay? Prayer and standing in the gap. This is a takeaway that I want y'all to go. First takeaway of the day. Well, maybe the second one I talked about, including God and finances. But the second takeaway of this episode, prayer and standing in the gap for your loved ones or your friends. Um, Right now, lately, like I said, I have a friend whose mom passed away and unfortunately her dad passed away too. So their family is going through and it is... So, like, I was just telling her, I was like, look, hey, I'm praying for you guys. I, you know, like, it, it's a it's a friend group of us. And I was like, we are going to stand in the gap. And what I mean by standing in the gap, I mean, we are, we as your friends, as your close friends are going to go to God in your place. And we're going to call up on God, not necessarily in your place, but petitioning him. You get what I'm saying? On your behalf, asking God to really and truly be there for you. Asking God to to cover your your family during this time. Asking for God to cover y'all in this in his secret place so that y'all can grieve. Like, yo, when you tell when people are grieving, we have to be careful. You have to be careful where you grieve at. You must grieve within the sacred place of God. You just cannot grieve out in the open because the enemy will come and attack you. You must grieve. You must grieve in the sacred place of God so that he can hide you in his shadows. Okay, he can hide you in his shadows so that he can protect you from the files of the enemy. So you when you start grieving, you pray over the sacred space of where you at and you pray and you ask God to come and commune and dwell up in this place. Ask him to hide you and let this be your secret place. If you in the car and you crying, you immediately start praying, God, I need you to hide me in your secret place. Let this place right here be your secret place and let me grieve within you and have your angels to be dispatched around me. While I grieve so that the enemy won't creep up. Okay. If we're not careful, if we're not careful. So this is why you pray for your friends when they're going through, when they're, you know, um, having a hard time, you stand in the gap. Sometimes we cannot say anything. We don't know what to say. We don't know what to do because our friend is going through and yo, when I heard about my friend dad, I was, I don't know what to say. <laughs> like, yo, it was just like, what, you, what do you say? I was, I was, I don't know. Like, I didn't know what to say. And I can remember when her mom died and we were at the, um, funeral. I'm not the funeral, but we were at the hospital and her sister was like, what, do, you know, she was looking at me and she was like, Danielle, what do you say? What do you, I was like, Nothing. I don't have anything, but what I'm going to make sure that you're okay. And I'm going to stand right here and I'm going to pray. Okay. I'm going to pray because I can't say nothing, nothing that I say or nothing that I do will bring your mom back. I just don't want you to be alone. And sometimes people do need to be alone because For whatever reason, they just need to be alone. But I just need to make sure you're safe. And so, you know, when she told us about the news about her dad, like our friend group got together and like we talked without her and um, we talked without her because I have a friend group. Shout out to Sister Circle. Some of them um, listen. And so it's about eight of us. Right. And my friend group is going through And when we go, when one person go through, it seems like the whole group go through. Like, because we're all connected. Like, we are all connected. And so, um, like, two of them have experienced death. 
back to back. And this is like, we're talking about people deaths as far as in mom, dad, sisters. We're talking about close, immediate death. And as a friend group, we have never experienced that. And so, you know, when my friend told us about that, I was just like, look, we're going to stand in the gap. We're going to go before God. We're going to petition God on behalf of you and on behalf of your family. And ask that God keep y'all during this difficult time and that the Holy Spirit dwell within the place that God. And mind you, shout out to Daddy Reynolds. Like my friend, Dad and Mom, and I hope I don't get teary eyed. Shout out to the Reynolds family. They took me in. When I moved to Shreveport, right after grad school, my friend, um, her family, like she, my friend, Quita, she actually found my apartment. Because after grad school, I told her, I was like, hey, you know, I may be coming to Shreveport. And so she was like, cool. She was like, I'm going to find you an apartment, whatever. So, like, she looked. She gave me some ideas. And so um, I went to visit them. I went to visit the apartments. And I ended up finding the apartment off the list that she gave me. And so, like, when I moved over here and, like, um, and I started living in Shreveport, every Sunday I would go to her house for Sunday dinner. And her mom would insist that I come. And it was what I needed because I did not have family down here that I was close to. And so it was something that I needed. And she will be like, and when I would miss a Sunday, she'd be like, where you been? You know, <laughs> just, just going off about where I've been, why I didn't come and holidays where I didn't go home. I was expected to be at their house. And so they took me in and I'm forever grateful. Her mom took me in, her dad, daddy Reynolds, shout out to him. Um, may the Lord bless his soul. May he rest in peace. He was a true soldier. God gained a real one when God called him on home. He had fought a good fight. When I say daddy runner has fought a good fight. And the reason why I called him daddy is because I have never called him Mr. Harold. That's his name. Harold Wendells. I have never said Mr. Harold. I have always said, hey daddy. Hey dad. And I don't even call him daddy Reynolds. I just call him dad because he was just that person. Like he would, he helped me in so many ways. And then he would be like, why you ain't come check on your daddy? Why you ain't come? Like y'all, he, this man had people really thinking that he was my daddy. <laughs> I'll never forget. He had went like a couple of years back. He had went into, um, was he at the nurse? No, he wasn't at the nurse home. He was at a skilled facility place. And so I had went to go see him. I was like, hey, daddy, you know, and I'm just a talking or whatever. We talking. And so the nurse comes in. He was like, yeah, this is my other daughter right here. We all was his daughters. If you were my friend, friends, we... We was his daughters. And so the nurse was like, yeah, I saw your sister the other day, blah, 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 this. And so she was like, which one are you? And I was like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not really his daughters. Like, <laughs> cause they had one and some, um, she had needed some medical advice or she needed approval to do medical. And I was like, that's not me. You need to call either one of these ladies on the board, but I never forget that or whatever. But yo, stand in the gap for y'all friends. Stand in the gap. If you you may not be able to be there physically, you may not be able to be there to give them a hug, or you may not know what to say, but there is one thing that you can do. You can go before the Father and you can pray. Stand in the gap for your friends, stand in the gap for your family, anybody whom you were close to and you know that it may be difficult for them to get out of prayer because they are grieving so hard, you yourself petition God and God is going to then request your prayers because he knows you you know him and he's going to be able to keep that you know like the prayers of the righteous avail as much a lot of us are living off our grandma and grandpa prayers let's just be honest so pray for your friends pray for your family okay so last but not least I want to talk about a lot of these deaths that has been going on y'all so many people have died within this last week we got betty wright i'm just i'm just done i'm floored by betty wright okay um i think the the last guy named stinger arrow i mean not harold 
Andre Harrell, I believe that's his name. Um, who else? Who else had died? Dog, I can't remember the last person. But y'all know four people have died. Four famous people, if you want to say. I didn't know who um Andre Harrell was. I, I still didn't know who he was, but I know that I seen him online, whatever. They famous, okay? <laughs> they he died. Little Richard, little Rich, Lord, little Richard Jesus. All these people die, and then you incorporate my friend's father, who is close to me. It's just like so many people have died, y'all. Y'all, we got to get our life right. If y'all don't have nothing else, we got to start really and truly getting our life right with Christ because he coming back, and he taking people left and right. The death angel has been busy, okay? I need the death angel to go on a vacation, Leave us alone. Go on and live vacay, Death Angel. Okay? We have been, <laughs> we're going to be all right. I promise. Go on your live vacation. Okay? And um, I want to talk about um, Ahmad Avery. 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 I believe his name is, last name is Avery. Um, for, please forgive me for pronouncing his name incorrectly. Um, the guy that was the young African American man that was gunned down by two Caucasian males in South Georgia, 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 and was recorded by another white male. Um, that case right there, y'all, as a African American female. That really and truly did something with me. I'm not going to lie. Um, that case, that was hard. That was, the video came out and you see him running and like, and lo and behold, I did not want to watch the video, but it was on my timeline and nobody had said what it was. So I'm just clicking on stuff, just watching, you know, I'm thinking it's a funny TikTok video. No, quickly did I realize the what I was watching, and I had already just felt like bad. And it doesn't help when you are a therapist and you have young African American men who you provide therapy for, and they see the videos and they want to talk about it. That's what I talked about all last week. And helping them process their their emotions while you're really and truly trying to process yours. You don't even have time to process your emotions because you're too busy trying to help other people process their emotions. And let's be honest, we are affected by that vicarious trauma. We are affected by that because the reality of this is that can be our family. That could be our family member. And so really and truly just being an African-American woman with these kids and really and truly them like getting upset because in the qu- in a statement that I kept getting all week was Miss Danielle, that could be me. I, you know, some of them are athletes. They run. Miss Danielle, That could be me. Miss Danielle, that could be me. And I can't say, no, that ain't going to be you. I can't say that. Because the reality of the matter is they were correct. And it was, it was difficult. You know, some of them, you know, they, you got emotional. Hell, you, you become emotional. And you try your best to be the best therapist that you can. But then sometimes the, because you are African-American woman and that, 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 that sometimes supersedes the therapist because it, what, what would I tell my son, you know, me and mom, they're really and truly talking to the kids and it's just like, 
You know, what do you tell your kid to make sure a black male, what do you tell a black male to look, do what you got to do to come home and pray that you come home because you can't do everything right. And they still kill you. So it's like, you know, what, what, what do you do? What do you say when this is our reality? This is our reality. And <laughs> y'all, that, that's my chill. I'm not over here Putin, okay? That's my chill. Um, yeah, that's our reality. So, y'all, I mean, because I don't want to cry um, on the podcast. So, I'm going to go ahead and get on up out of here. And I'm going to remind y'all to keep praying. Keep praying for your family. Keep praying for your, um, for your family. Keep praying for our nation. Keep praying for the kids who you're involved with. Just keep praying. All right, y'all. Well, that's all I got for y'all wonderful people on today. I'm finna get up out of here. I'm finna go and process a little bit more some of my feelings. And I'm probably finna go and get some crawfish. Yep. Yeah, it's it's just been a rough one. And crawfish make me feel better. Because we're from Louisiana. And crawfish is life. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to this episode of Southern Therapy Podcast. I am your host, the one and only Danielle Bailey, and I look forward to seeing you guys on next week. Bye, y'all. Love y'all so much. Stay safe and enjoy life. Thank you. Bye, y'all.